Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. And it's important that the body of Yeshua, the body of Jesus, understands what God requires, what God wants. The Bible says to offer ourselves as spiritual sacrifices. What shall we do? What shall we offer to God as a spiritual sacrifice? In the Old Testament, God required that the people would bring sacrifices as worship. In the New Testament, the apostles speak about offering spiritual sacrifices to God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yeshua, through Jesus. Let's have a look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and see what Paul says under the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So we can see in the Old Testament, God also had the Israelites sacrifice animal as worship. And here we see that Paul is saying, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So we can see that everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new and how it all begins to tie in. The question is, what are these sacrifices that are acceptable to God? Is there any connection between the Old Testament and the physical sacrifices that now have to do with the spiritual sacrifices? Absolutely. And we're going to have a deep look at what the Bible says in context. The Hebrew word for sacrifices is the word koban. And koban means an offering, an obligation, or a sacrifice. It also comes from the root word likarev or karab, which means to draw near. So now we can see that the sacrifices are not just sacrifices. They come from the root word in Hebrew to draw near. One of the reasons God required sacrifice in the Old Testament was the person bringing the sacrifice would draw near to God. These sacrifices were offered at the tabernacle, at the place where God would dwell. And we find this concept in many places. We'll have a look at one place, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. And let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So we can see that the purpose of the sacrifice was for the person to get close to God and let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And we know that the way that they drew near to God by prayer and worship at that time was through the sacrifice. When God had that dwelling place on earth, the sacrifices had to be presented at that dwelling place. Let's have a deeper look. Leviticus chapter 17, verses 8 and 9. And say to them, any Israelite or any foreigner, here we see the concept of the one new man, one in Messiah Yeshua, the Israelite and the foreigner. Say to them, any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of the meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord must be cut off from the people of Israel. And so we can see the beautiful picture, what Paul speaks about in Ephesians 2.15, the one new man, what the Bible says in the book of el in Romans 11.15-17, to 17, the grafted into the olive tree. We can see all the way back here in the Old Testament when they were doing the sacrifices that it was also for the foreigner. This picture in the Old Testament gives us a deep insight in how these spiritual sacrifices should be given. Because everything in the Old Testament's a shadow of the new. And now when we read the Bible verses in the New Testament, we can tie them in with the Old Testament and understand what God is speaking to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. We see the same words used in the book of Leviticus 17, verses 8 and 9, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of the meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord must be cut off from the people of Israel. The same words used here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. The word you here 
in the Hebrew text doesn't refer to one person. It refers to multiple people, which means God's temple, God's congregation, the body of Yeshua, God's dwelling place, God's, Yeshua's spiritual temple. So that means that the spiritual sacrifices need to be offered in this spiritual temple. Another important feature that we find in the Old Testament is the smell that those sacrifices would produce. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 9, But its entrails and its legs he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Very important to emphasize on this, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And we need to understand what is that pleasing aroma. This idea of a pleasing aroma is a biblical Hebrew idiom. Having a good smell to someone means that you have favor with them. Having a bad smell to someone means that you will suffer their wrath. Here are a few examples from the Bible of this type of phrasing. Let's have a look at Exodus chapter 5, verse 21. And they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Notice he uses the word here, you have made us stink. It is a bad aroma. This is a biblical concept. There are many places in the Bible. Let's have a look at another example. Genesis 34, verse 30. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me stink to the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. My numbers are few, and if they gather themselves against me and attack me, I shall be destroyed, both I and my household. And so we begin to understand the biblical concept of what it means to bring a pleasing aroma to the Lord. A pleasing aroma would mean we have favor with the Lord. A bad aroma would mean would be destroyed. And they understood this in biblical times. It was a biblical idiom. We read some examples about a bad smell and receiving wrath. Let's have a look at a Bible verse of a pleasing smell. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered a burnt offering on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, notice what he says. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. So we can see here that Noah provided an offering to God, and it was a pleasing aroma, and God gave favor. And so we begin to have a deeper look at what these spiritual sacrifices meant in the Old Testament and what it means for us as believers in Yeshua, believers in God, what it means, what God requires us as a pleasing aroma. The question is, what type of spiritual things provide a pleasing aroma, a pleasing smell to God? Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 6. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Yeshua loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Let there be no filthness, nor foolish talk, or crude joking, which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral, or impure, or who is covetous, that is an adulterer, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Yeshua and God. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Here we see that the love of Yeshua is a good fragrance or good smell offering to God. Because Yeshua is the sacrifice. He fulfilled all sacrifices once and for all on the tree on the cross, rose on the third day, and by his blood all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins and eternal life. He is the pleasing aroma. He is the sacrifice. So we can see very clear that those that are disobedient are not offering good sacrifice. They're offering bad sacrifices to God, which will result in the wrath of God and separation from Yeshua, separation from the kingdom. Only Yeshua is that pleasing aroma. 
And that was the foreshadow in the Old Testament. God wanted the people to get close to him in the dwelling place by presenting a pleasing aroma, a pleasing korban. Now, the only way we can get close to God is by Yeshua HaMashiach, that pleasing aroma. No one makes it to the Father, but only through Yeshua HaMashiach, only through Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And the word there for I never knew you is the word yada. The word yada, it's an intimate relationship. It's the same word used in Genesis 4 verse 1. And Adam knew his wife. It's an intimate relationship. God is not searching for religion. God is searching for a relationship. Depart from me. I never knew you. You never had a relationship with me. All you were doing was religion. Depart from me is the exact opposite of drawing near. But we can see here that the people here were not offering acceptable sacrifices to God. They were not giving a pleasing aroma. Depart from me. I never knew you. It's the same concept that we read in the Old Testament. All those who do not present a good aroma to God will be cut off from Israel. And we know that Israel represents spiritual Israel right now. As believers in Yeshua, in Jesus, if you're grafted into the olive tree, if you're born again, then you're part of the commonwealth of Israel. You become spiritually Israel. And only those who are spiritually Israel will enter into the new heavens, new earth, new Yerushalayim, new Jerusalem. You are a child of God. But those who do not present a pleasing aroma to God, a spiritual pleasing aroma, God will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. God is very specific in his word what kind of offerings he requires. Let's have a look at Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? So we can see here clearly what God requires as a spiritual offering. The sacrifices were just a foreshadow. We read this also in the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verses 16 and 17. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give you a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. This is a biblical concept all through the Bible. Let's have a look at Isaiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Let's also have a look at the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. This is why the spiritual sacrifices have to be sacrificed inside the congregation, that is, inside of ourselves, because Yeshua lives inside of us. That's why he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world, because Yeshua is the light of the world, and he lives inside of us. Our love for Yeshua and for other people is outwardly, but it originates inside our heart. Matthew chapter 15, verses 16 to 20 says, And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? 
but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Those are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a person. In the context here, he's speaking to the religious leaders that were always focused on religion and changing God's word. And God was telling them, repent. And he's telling the believers today to present ourselves as living sacrifices, acceptable to God with a pleasing aroma. Let's have a look at Romans 10, verse 10. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. God is searching for the heart. He's not searching for religion. He's searching for that pleasing aroma, given the spiritual sacrifices, our worship, our prayer, our love for others, which is the gospel, the pleasing aroma acceptable to God through Messiah Yeshua, because all of us have fallen short of the glory. But through him, we become righteous. Through him, we become priests, because he's our high priest. Run the race, make it to the end, and consummate the marriage as the bride of Yeshua, Jesus. Once again, everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. This is a direct quote of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And of course, that word there, that capital Lord in Hebrew is Yehovah, Yahweh, the great I am, Jesus, Yeshua. You shall love the Lord, Yehovah, Jesus, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. If you're wondering what type of spiritual offering does God require of you as a pleasing aroma? Number one, examine yourself, humble yourself before God. And if there are attitudes or habits that you have that smell bad to him, repent of those sins and stop doing those things. Number two, look around you and find ways to be just and kind and to help meet the needs of people around you. And don't worry about these offerings to God being too small, because God will not be more impressed by our larger offering. When it comes to spiritual sacrifices, becoming a humble, just, kind person is exactly the kind of offering that he's looking for, that pleasing aroma, and you will find favor with God. And the Bible says that the favor of the non-believer will fall upon the believer Hallelujah, because we are in the world. We are not of the world. If you're walking in God's favor, you're exactly in the place where God wants you to be. That pleasing aroma. Hallelujah. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. Remember, we're small people with a big God. Remember in the Old Testament, the purpose of the sacrifices was to draw near to God. From the word korban in Hebrew, lehit karev, to get close. Now we have the spiritual sacrifices. God wants us to get close to him. Let's have a look at the book of Yaakov, James, chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Give him a pleasing aroma. We see here that word, that spiritual sacrifice again, draw near to God, that koban, the spiritual sacrifice. That's how we are to present ourselves as living sacrifices. Draw near to God and he will exalt you through Messiah Yeshua, through Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I pray that you've been blessed by this teaching as I've been blessed over the years. Let's humble ourselves and give a pleasing aroma to the Lord, a spiritual sacrifice. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest together. Bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aryeh Yehuda, the line of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Jesus Yeshua, amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah, amen.